Um, all right, the the first Sunday game, uh, there there aren't that many early Sunday games. Uh, I don't know why they did this. Uh, I know there are a lot of uh, West Coast teams playing late, but it just seems weird. Uh, so there are, I, I believe, six, and the first one is has no line. It's Redskins at the Lions. Um, there's no line because we don't know if Matthew Stafford is going to play or not. He suffered a, a, a concussion uh, against the Vikings in the second half. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this? Like, what, what do you think the line is going to be, or like general uh, thoughts on this game? Yeah, I think this line is probably going to favor the Lions. Um, I think if Matthew Stafford plays, we're going to see a number around three, maybe four. Um, I, I just think that the the books are going to look at what happened to Washington last week, losing to the Giants for a second time this year, especially coming off a bye. And they're going to say, I don't think they're going to have a chance against the Lions if Stafford plays. Um if that is the line and Stafford is playing, I actually do like Washington in that uh, situation, um, playing as a, an underdog, um, because I think Alex Smith showed last week that he's kind of getting back in the groove of things. He had to replace Kyle Allen uh, mid-game, and you know he came in and actually threw the ball pretty well. He had three interceptions. I'm not overlooking those, um, but if you break down all of them, the first one – Uh, The back fell down on the route, so it just went straight to the linebacker. The second one was a really bad decision on Smith's part, um, so he shouldn't have made that throw late in the game. The third one, they were in desperation mode. They had to drive the length of the field with like a minute, 40 seconds left, so he threw it deep and it got picked. Um, So I'm not putting a ton of stock into that, but I am putting stock into the fact that he averaged over, I think, 10 yards per attempt, which is pretty huge for a quarterback like him. So I think he's going to be fine. He's going to be able to lead that offense to uh, some success against what has been a weak Lions defense in recent weeks. They were just gashed by the Colts, who, as we were talking about, don't have a great offense, and the Vikings, who Dalvin Cook ran like crazy all over them. The other key injury in this one is Kenny Galladay. If Galladay's in for the Lions, then I think they do much better on offense and I might switch my pick. But I'm kind of anticipating that he might not be around this week. Um, And if he's not, I think Stafford's going to have a a tougher time uh, connecting with his receivers against what's been a good Washington defense. They have had their rough patches, but they can get pressure on Stafford and they can limit at least at least if Kenny Galladay's out, they should be able to limit the receiver. So I like Washington here, depending on the line. Um, If there's a backup starting and then this swings way in Washington's favor, then I might reconsider. Um, But I I think they're going to keep it close. I I see this being maybe a field goal game. So I'll take Washington if they're an underdog. Maybe it'll be uh, the inverse of last year. Remember uh, last year, the the lines were at the Redskins and uh, Je- Jeff Driscoll was like a, what, a four point road favorite. So maybe, uh, maybe if um, Chase Daniel starts on the lines, maybe Alex Smith will be a four point road favorite and we could bet against them. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I agree. Like if, if Stafford's in, it's probably like, uh, the lines are favored by more than a field goal. Um, and I, I actually think I like the lines at that, at that point. Um, it really depends on Kenny Galladay, as you said, like that's a big injury. Um, if he's back, I definitely like the lines. If not, I, I'm not really sure where I go yet. I have to see what the spread is, but, um, it seems like the lions feast on these horrible teams. Like they, they only beat the bad teams. Like, remember, uh, they, they clobbered the Jaguars a few weeks ago. Uh, they beat Atlanta. Like, it seems like all their wins comes against these, these bad teams and whatever they have to play a good team they get they get smoked um and i i think you know obviously the redskins are are terrible like they they just they couldn't beat the giants they've lost the giants twice and i know they 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 made a lot of mistakes last week but that's what bad teams do is make a lot of mistakes so um i i think that you know i i would say the lions um i think they have a good chance uh to cover this especially if galladay plays so we'll have to see what the line is um but right now i'm leaning toward detroit yeah and that's totally fair i just think that Washington's been one of the frustrating teams this year because every time you think like, oh, they're starting to put it together under, they take a step back. And that's what it felt like coming out of the bye. Now, like it's time for them to give people hope again and be like, oh, must beat the Lions and they covered. But like you said, we don't really know uh, without a line, uh, without a line what's going to happen and we need to see the injury report. So this will be one of the ones I'm watching though, because I'm more interested to see what the line is going to be. Yeah, uh, and what Andrew says, uh, if you can only beat bad teams, you're a bad team too. Yeah, I mean, but they're the best of the bad teams. Like, it's like, I, I, I don't even know, like, what to compare it to, but they're like the uh, the biggest small fish in the pond. Like, that, that's basically what the Lions have been over the years. 